Timex is an iconic watch brand that needs no introduction. I recently picked up one of their Marlin models and I'd like to share more about it with you guys. This is one of the various Timex Marlin models released in conjunction with the 70th anniversary of the Peanuts cartoons, another icon of the mid-20th century, featuring the beloved comic book characters of Charlie Brown, Snoopy, etc. As a longtime Peanuts fan and also as a casual watch enthusiast, picking up the Timex Marlin X Snoopy watch was a dream come true for me. Well, okay, dream may be a bit hyperbolic. Considering the price is around US $250 only, and you can even get it cheaper at a discount as it occasionally goes on sale. For a decent entry-level automatic watch, I'd say that's pretty good value for money. I'd say that it's even better value for money than some similarly priced fashion watches or even the hyped Swatch X Omega Moon Swatch Pandemic Phenomenon, which retails at around US $300 and uses a quartz movement. Full disclosure, I do own a Mission to Sun Moon Swatch, more on that later. But when the Moon Swatch mania dies down, I suspect that the Timex Marlin Snoopy Peanuts character watches will hold its value longer if we are comparing them both on the novelty watches metric. Or even not talking about them as novelty watches, but build quality. Sidebar, I have a Swatch System 51 the very first generation released in 2017. This was the very first automatic watch released by Swatch. Prior to this, all of their watches from their famed Plastic Fantastic to their pricier stainless steel irony line were all quartz movement watches. What made the System 51 a collectible and historical marvel was that it was built with only 51 distinct parts, which is very few, very little for an automatic watch. It was also built completely by robots. Usually, some part of automatic watches involve a bit of human assembly, even the cheap Chinese seagull movements. This first generation System 51 was not exactly expensive at 200 US dollars or so retail back in 2017, but neither was it an ultra cheap 25 US dollar Casio. The movement died after three and a half years, which is a very short lifespan for that price, even at US $200. It's not repairable too, since the automatic movement was hermetically sealed. Cue back to its marketing pitch of being totally assembled by robots, untouched by human hands. So I don't know honestly how long this Swatch Moon Swatch will last, although hopefully its quartz movement will last longer. That's why I feel that the Timex Marlin will be of better value in the long run, not only as a collectible novelty watch, but the fact that it will still keep ticking after five years. As an automatic watch, it does not need battery replacements. You power it by simply wearing it on your wrist after setting the time. According to online reviews, the Timex Marlin has a 30-hour power reserve. This Timex Marlin is actually a second-generation reissue. The very first Marlin came out in the 1950s as an affordable dress watch alternative to pricier brands like Omega, which are not able to keep out moisture from the watch in those days. The OG Timex Marlin was proud to call itself waterproof. We'd call it water resistance in today's parlance, at a fraction of the price of much pricier watches in those days. It was not made to be a tool watch or a dive watch, but as a more formal dress watch. So the Marlin, being somewhat water resistant, was a marvel for that time. In 2017, a more modern Timex Marlin was reissued to great fanfare. It was nearly identical to the original mid-century one, with the same 34 millimeter diameter. I'll link to the primary sources I used to research this down below. I will not talk at length about that 2017 reissue as I don't own one. This second generation reissue at 40mm, the one that I have now, is slightly bigger than the 34mm diameter of both the original 1950s one and the 2017 reissue. 40mm is no longer considered large nowadays though. Men's watches are usually larger than 40mm now and many watches marketed as unisex are at 40mm. To be honest, it's a bit bulky in my small wrist, but since it's pretty lightweight, it does not feel too bad. The crystal is domed acrylic, nearly identical to the original 1950s model, very retro. The dome makes it look even bulkier, especially when viewed in profile. The case back is transparent, so you can see the movement. The 2017 reissue used a Chinese seagull movement, and this 2020 onwards 40mm one, including all the Peanuts collabs, uses one of two Japanese Miyota movements, one with a day and date, one without. Mine is the 
model without the day and date complication. It only tells the time. If you get the one with the day and date, it costs a little bit more. I think $60 more or so. Another nice feature of this watch is the hour and minute hands have some loom to them. Not super strong loom, it fades fast. But it's helpful if you find yourself suddenly in a dark room after leaving a brighter environment. When the light hits the watch face just right, you can see it give off a very nice sunburst reflection. This is not really a utilitarian feature but an aesthetic one, but it's very eye-catching and pleasing. It's still subtle enough to not be obnoxious. My Mission to Sun Moon Swatch also has a faint sunburst reflection to it, but I think the silver Timex Marlin executed it in a much nicer way. There is a Timex logo engraved into the movement's rotor, giving it a personalized touch. The Peanuts collab models have different variations. They did not all drop at the same time during the 2020 anniversary launch. They came out over the span of months and some coincided with the holidays, like the Charlie Brown variant over Christmas. The one I got was the Snoopy Flying Ace variant, where he's in his World War I pilot costume. I wanted the one with him by his typewriter, but it was out of stock. This variant came with a plain black leather strap by the same company that makes Red Wing shoes. The spring bars have a nice quick release mechanism to them. You can easily change straps without having to use a spring bar tool and like old style straps. You just have to buy straps that also have quick release spring bars, which are very common nowadays in 2023. In this demo, I put on one of the popular silicone material sports style bands on it. In this other demo, I put on an elastic type fabric one that fits a bit tighter. Just changing the straps changes the entire look of the watch from serious looking to either sporty or more fun looking. And I did not have to use tools too, since these two modern straps both have quick release spring bar mechanisms. It's very easy to buy additional straps for the Timex Marlin as 20mm lug width straps are super common. If you want to put on a slip-through NATO strap on it, you can easily buy garden variety 20mm wide spring bars. The buckle also has a nice logo engraved into it. When the original leather strap eventually cracks and breaks after use, you can even transfer the buckle onto a new leather strap, like I did with my over a decade old Timex Expedition field watch here. This brown strap is no longer the stock brown strap of the Timex Expedition. That one already cracked and got worn out over time. But it was a cinch to transfer the original buckle onto the new strap. The Peanuts collab also extends to the packaging. The inlaid fabric inside the box has a four-panel comic strip of Snoopy role-playing a World War I Flying Ace pilot. I imagine the other watches feature other comic strips, like Snoopy and his typewriter watch model will feature a comic strip of him doing one of his angsty writer gags. As you can see, I'm a big Peanuts fan. These three comic books that you see here are not my only Peanuts comic books. I just don't have the time to dig through them all, and it's going to make the video really long if I show them all. Hope you enjoyed watching my thoughts on this watch. I'm Jem. I'm not a big watch expert or collector by any means. I just wanted to share this new watch with you all. If you want to know more about the Timex Marlin and this Peanuts collab, I'm going to link to the web pages I use as research material down below. You probably are not going to see me make another watch video very soon after as I don't have much to say about this topic. But I hope you enjoyed the video enough to want to subscribe and watch my other videos. I'd also appreciate a thumbs up if you liked it. See you next video!